Hi, my name is Helen Welton. Welcome to Stories from the Art Room. This is part three of The Power in Family Names, where I'd like to share when we might, where we might be going with how we label and fix our identity. In Britain, there is a very well-known journalist, TV presenter and Labour peer called Joan Bakewell. I mention her because she is a very good example of a person who has become highly successful in her chosen career but is very well known by a family name that does not really represent her. For Bakewell is her first husband's surname and she divorced him in 1972, married someone else in 1975 but stayed with the name Bakewell because by 1972 she'd established her professional reputation with that surname. Many women these days are entering partnerships or marriages where they do not necessarily change their surname. They have successful careers like Joan Bakewell and if we think back to how people had to come up with the surname in 1086 when their goods were recorded in the Doomsday Book, I don't see why women should not start having one family name throughout their life that, re that represents their mother's genealogy uh, should they, they, they wish to. John Lennon made a radical move when he incorporated Ono alongside his surname on marrying Yoko, which was unusual in 1969. Since the structure of the family, certainly in Western culture, is changing and identity and connectedness is vitally important to individuals, how would a system of naming that recognises both the mother and father work? Here's a suggestion, and I'd be interested in, in any other ideas, so please post them below, especially if you have some fun making up Dane names for your family. We start with a father, father's surname, Mark, and a mother, damn name, Writer. They have a son. His family name would then be Writer Mark. The daughter's family names would be the other way around, Mark Writer. And the daughter would keep these family names throughout her life. When the son, say Jack Writer Mark, has children, he passes his surname, surname, Mark, onto his children, but he retains his mother's damn name, writer, because his children will get their damn name from their mother. When their daughter has children, she passes on her damn name, writer, to her children while retaining her surname, surname Mark, because her children will take their surname from their father. And the family names of their maternal grandfather and paternal grandmother can be easily identified one generation back. Too complicated? How about the damn name in men being presented as a matronymic middle name before the surname? And for women, they could have a patronymic middle name before their damn name, their only family name. They would take that from their mother rather than have a surname from their father. This system offers the possibility of dispensing with the idea of illegitimacy. No child need be illegitimate. Of course, there would be exceptions to the simple rule and careful arrangements made for those individuals whose naming did not fit into this model. Any other suggestions? I would like to end by showing some terracotta fridge magnets I've made after seeing a documentary by Gunter Dreyer about the very earliest form of ancient Egyptian writing from Abydos, which was inscribed on bone and ivory tags on food sacks from around 3,400 to 3,200 BC. 
I've posted a link to a website to give you details on that below. Basically, one to four of these glyphs were used to say who, where from, and what was inside the containers of food. And that's what I think most people would want from a naming system. First name, where from, and what we are inside. Thanks for watching my vlog. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts, so please do post them below. If you would like to watch part four on my concerns on how self-labelling might work in the future, please subscribe uh, so you can get a notification of when that's posted. And so hope to see you then.